tip number 37 from the book 501 contractor tips and again i'm promoting my book um, so if you like the videos but you don't want to spend all the time watching them hey get the book um, they're brief these videos are just to kind of elaborate on the um, tips give you a little more information which hopefully i'll finish all the uh, videos in, in a timely manner to where if you do have the book and you want a little more information about one of the tips you'll be able to go to the YouTube channel or the website and get the information um, or at least get a little more information. Um, tip number 37 location 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 you hear this in business and in, in, in construction it's no different. I've talked to people who live in small towns and, and don't make enough money, they do contracting on the side because there isn't enough work in their area. Um, and then of course, other contractors who live in large metropolitan cities, New York, San Francisco, San Diego, and they can barely, barely have time to um, uh, vacation, take any time off, they just don't have, there's just too much work. Um, Look in location, location, location. If you live in a small town where there isn't much work and you're not making a good living, this is the key here. You're not making a good living. You might think about moving. Again, if you love your area and you're going to stay there no matter what, this is great. I love this town. I was born and raised here. Great. Uh, then, then, it, then you might need another job to supplement your income if you really enjoy contracting. If not, then you might want to think about just getting out of it altogether. Or there is another alternative, driving into larger areas. So this is if you live outside of a metropolitan large area, um, highly populated city, then you can always drive into that and do your work. Hopefully you're not too far away. Large cities like San Francisco and New York City usually pay premium prices for good contractors and construction workers. When I was working in the Carpenters Union in the early 1980s, I think our scale was $17 an hour and in San Francisco, I believe it was $27 an hour. That's a lot of money. That's a big difference there. So um, that's just something to think about. If you're struggling right now, and you really can't figure out why, um, but you live in a small city. There, you know, you live in small areas. Like, and I want to say, like, when I travel to the Midwest, which I haven't done this a lot, um, but when I travel to certain areas, um, uh, I'm from Southern California, by the way. So when I get outside of Southern California, there are a lot of people who love to do things themselves, or don't have a choice. They don't make enough money. They have to fix it themselves. They have to do their home repairs and any remodeling, anything, um, because um, they don't make enough money. So, but, but it's different when you get into an area like New York City, let's say, where these people don't have the time. They're already working 70 hours a week. And uh, for them to do any uh, remodel a kitchen, this ain't going to happen at all. And uh, they need to hire somebody. And, um, and again, if they're working 70 hours, they probably have the money to pay somebody. Someone who's working 40 hours a week at a factory, um, you know, these people might have the time to, to uh, work after um, their jobs, after hours on a project, and of course work the weekends or whenever they have time off. So just something to consider uh, if you live in a small town. 